I believe what causes your life to become richer and fuller is when you become a giver. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Now receiving is fun, but the true revelation that comes alive in Christianity is when you become a giver. And you find the joy that's in giving. When we get to the end of our life, we're not a rich person because of all that we have received and accumulated. I am a rich person because of all that I've been able to give in my life. My goal is not the receiving of as much as possible towards the end of my days. My goal is to consistently give throughout my life. And when I look back at how many people are blessed because I have given, that's what makes me rich. Not how many people lack because I've taken and received from them. We want to be givers. You cannot love without giving. It's actually impossible. You can give without loving. A lot of people do that. They, they give to sometimes obligate people. But if you're going to love somebody, you're going to have to give. If you're in a relationship and it's suffering right now, and it's, and it's not well, things are not going good, it's not healthy, it's not happy, it's no more fun. First of all, any kind of relationship you have should be fun. If you're married and, and you feel like you're dying, something's wrong. You know, marriage should be a little bit of heaven on earth, not hell on earth. If yours is like hell on earth, get saved. But if, if something is wrong in a relationship, if you trace it back, I can guarantee you somewhere along the way you stop giving. And usually we stop giving because we stop receiving. Your giving cannot be based on your receiving. See, love doesn't need to receive to cause it to function and stay alive. Love in, in and of itself is strong enough and powerful enough that we, even without receiving, it does not lack. The Bible says God is love. Now, God has power, but he is love. Everything that he does comes from the motivation of love. And the Bible says love never fails. See, when you love, you'll never fail. If you're loving people and they're trying to take advantage of you, you still will not fail because love will always overcome selfishness. Love always overcomes hate and greed. Love always overcomes. Love forgives. Love doesn't wait until you earn it. See, forgiveness cannot be earned and it cannot be bought and it cannot be painful, paid for. God loved me when I was still a sinner. Now that's the hardest, one of the biggest challenges we have. And that's why it's one of the most distinguishing marks of a believer is we love people regardless of what they do to us. And that's hard. I didn't say it was easy. But also that's why love is not a feeling. It's not this fuzzy emotion. Love does what's right. Now when the Bible says love your enemies, it doesn't mean invite them over to dinner. It doesn't mean greet them with a kiss and go into business with them. But to love people, if it's an enemy, love them, do not curse them. Wish no harm. Pray for no harm. Don't pray for lightning bolts out of heaven or earthquakes to open up and swallow them. See, that's why you're not God. You would not make a very good God. You would be like, you know, Old Testament judgment. Step on them. Yeah, that's what you get. Your mercy does not endure forever, but His does. Love gives. And if, if you're in any kind of relationship, and really... Everybody here should be in some kind of a relationship. If you're married, hello, you're in a relationship. But today you're either a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, a husband, a wife, a son or a daughter, or a Christian. Now you should qualify for at least one of those. Now, when you look at the Bible, it doesn't give you a lot of great teaching on how to be a good husband. You know, which, which I mean, you can go to Ephesians chapter 5, and of course I could teach for a couple weeks on that. Ephesians chapter 5. But 
Where do you go in the Bible where it teaches you how to be a great husband, how to be a, a, a great wife, how to be a good dad, a good mom, a good brother, a good sister, a good son, a good daughter, a good Lolo, a good Lola? How, where, where, where does the Bible teach us how to do that? Well, it teaches us how to be Christians. The Bible teaches us that we're new creatures in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that, that he's put his spirit on the inside of us. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that we are to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. In other words, what God has put on the inside of us, we are responsible individually to bring out what he's put on the inside of us. So if I will develop my Christianity, I'll be a better husband. You want to be a better husband? Be a better Christian man. You want to be a good wife? Be a better Christian woman. See, the better Christian I am, the better husband I am, the better dad I am, the better son I am, the better father I am, the better pastor I am, the better friend I am. It's amazing that if I'll develop my, my walk with him, it automatically affects every relationship that I'm in. And if you want to see some joy come alive in your relationships, start giving. And in fact, in any relationship you're in, ask yourself right now, as you examine these different relationships, where am I giving in these relationships to cause this relationship to come alive and have fun? I don't believe life should be so hard. I do not believe that God created us to suffer through life. I don't know if you remember the story of the little boy walking down the beach. And because of a strong surge tide in a storm, a lot of starfish have been washed up onto the beach. They're all sitting there on the beach stranded. They're all, they're all going to die. So this little boy is walking along the beach and he stops, picks up a starfish, throws it, and there's just hundreds and hundreds on the beach. So he walks over here and he picks up one and throws it in the ocean. This old man is standing there and he goes, what are you doing? He said, I'm saving the starfish. He goes, son, look at this beach. There are hundreds and hundreds of hundreds. You actually think you're going to save the starfish? Look at the knee. Look at all of this. There's no way you're going to save the starfish. And while the old man, who has been hardened by disappointment and frustration in life, stands there and talks about what can't be done and says, you, you, you can't save all the starfish. But the little boy, ignoring the old man, walks along and says, well, this one I can. This one I can. You know, if you look down the beach and you look down there and things seem to be so overwhelmed and you think, I can't do all that, but this one I can. For God so loved the world. You say, well, I can't love the world. How about family? How about your friends? How about people at work? You don't have to look at the, the Philippines as a whole and, and the, the millions upon millions and say, okay, what difference can I make? Well, you loving God and you loving people. And in fact, if you look at the great commandment, the great commandment is to what? Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength and to love your... He said, I want you to love me, but I really want you to love people. Why? Because that is the distinguishing factor. When you love people, do you realize what happens when you love people? You release something. Because God is love, and love never fails. And so when you love people, when you give people, and, and see, the only way that you can love people is by giving. You love people through your actions, through your words, through your consideration, through your time, through your kindness, through your giving. And so what happens is when you love somebody, you release the most powerful force on the earth, the love of God. 